Leaky hatches, apples not working, weevils, weevils in food. Do you ever sometimes just wake up in the morning and you just can't pick a direction? So I feel like right now a bit of a, a bit of a teen dream with this. <laughs> Okay, the roof is off. I'm too busy just chattering. Morning. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. Last week on Sailing Millennial Falcon. Whilst collecting our new solar panels, we had some mechanical problems with our dinghy. The boat is revving with the prop eight turning, there's something really wrong. At the time, we were anchored a long way from anywhere, so we decided to take a somewhat wet and wild drive across the bay to a more sheltered anchorage called Mont Rouge, where we hoped we would be able to row ashore and get what we needed to solve the problem. So I'm going to need to venture out into the rain. <laughs> it has stopped raining. But I've also just gone into our cupboards to figure out what we can have for dinner tonight and discovered weevils in everything. And we're very low on food to begin with, so I will venture out in the rain and I will test the new oar locks that I put on um, to see if I can vote ashore as well, uh, since our outboard is on the fritz. <laughs> what else is there? Let's just add everything else to the list. I also have a leaky hatch. Leaky hatches, apples not working, weevils, weevils in food. What is going right today? Next one of us will get dengue. Dengue fever's going around in the islands at the moment too, so yes. hold that thought. <laughs> long walk to the shops um, and I'm hoping that the dinghy is still there didn't tie it on as well as I should have and I only kind of thought about it when I left the shops and after about a half an hour walk there's not really much you can do other than just walk really fast to get back to the dinghy um, I've tried looking out to see whether it's floated away and nothing seems to be there so fingers crossed it's still tied up at the beach Still here, all good. Now time to get to row back home again. So after about 20 minutes of rowing, there and almost back, it turns out that these oars are actually adjustable towards the oar. I just thought they were kind of adjustable and in my head I was thinking, why would you be standing up when you were rowing? That's really strange. It's now a lot easier to row. However, the same fate for this lock that happened on this side is also happening on this side, even despite the fact that I stuck it down with 5200. Um, so I'll see how long this takes to get me home. The following morning, we decided it was time to hoist the outboard on deck and see if we could spot the problem. Do you ever sometimes just wake up in the morning and you just can't pick a direction and you can't start anything because you've got so many things going on? That's this morning. I've woken up, three cups of coffee, probably not helping, but we've I've started editing and then I started like, we hoisted the outboard to fix that. Um, and just everywhere I look, there's the remnants of various projects that we've got going on, whether it be tools or like lines or washing or, um, chain for the dinghy the gas bottle that's got to move like it's no one's fault we're just busy there's lots going on and because of the rain you have to obviously corral everything in the shelter so i've decided that i'm going to just forget all of that and kara's going to give me a haircut i figure if i just shower shave get a haircut 
get a fresh lease on life. Maybe I'll be a uh, brand new man and a brand new day. Let's do this. So, also, this is sort of a video diary for insurance purposes uh, <laughs> as to the before and after. So, I feel like right now a bit of a, a bit of a teen dream with this, <laughs> <laughs> this fringe. Yeah. We'll see how I look after right. you've had your handiwork. This is the before shot and this is the after shot. Uh, it, just, it came up okay. Not bad for free, I guess you'd get what you pay for, hey babe? said that. I should not have said that. Alright, so I'm going to I'm gonna take the propeller off the outboard today. I've been kind of putting it off because I really don't want to know what's wrong because I think it's going to be expensive and a nuisance to find a replacement propeller. There's like a, peri a sacrificial part in there that is designed to fail before you sort of strip the gear. Um, and I think that has failed, which is why sort of the prop is still spinning, but it's not spinning the way it should. If it's not the case, then we have bigger fish to fry and it's probably beyond my skill set. Either way, I won't know till I pull the propeller off. Got a big block of wood and an adjustable hammer. Uh, <laughs> spanner. propeller off here but gotta be honest with you it doesn't look to be that damaged and you can see inside there's like a, a really tightly packed rubber sleeve and I imagine if that lets go and starts to free spin then the prop won't be getting full power. Kiara's had a bit of a hunt around this morning already for a new propeller and it's not looking super good. So we're gonna have to go on a little bit of an expedition sometime today or tomorrow or whenever we can to track a new one down. In the meantime, I thought it would be wise to check the shaft to see if it was behaving itself. You know, it's very hard to tell when it's uh, spinning at a couple of hundred to a thousand RPM and you're eyeballing it, but I think it was spinning faster. What I suspect is that the prop, like when the shaft is off and there's no prop on there, it spins normally, but when the prop is loaded, the, uh, the gear inside the propeller is slipping. We've just spent the last half an hour to an hour just calling around all stores, every and all store here, stores here in Grenada. There only seems to be one store that seems to sell this propeller. So the next way over, which means that we're going to have to go to shore here, we're going to have to get in a bus and and I'm going to also have to take the propeller off while I'm on shore as well to make sure that I'm getting the right one. All locks fell off so I can't row, we definitely need the outboard to go and meanwhile Adam's going to stay here because I always find it a waste to have two people going to shore when Adam can be doing something productive on the boat. That's if he does something productive. I'll get, the, I'll get into the rigging. I think. He's going to do the rigging. So that's the situation right now, that's the plan is that I'm going to head to shore. I need to get this propeller off. It was pretty self-explanatory when Adam did it. Um, but what I did, what I did on the way here was that I put it full burst to see um, whether I'd be able to see whether it was slipping before we put the propeller back on. Oh, we put a white line and wax on here, on the propeller and uh, the piece of rubber, which is possibly slipping. So if it's not lined up anymore, then it means that it is slipping. And if it's still lined up, then I guess I'm still going to get a propeller anyway because um, then I don't know what the problem is <laughs> but at least we might get a better, a better idea. Okay so I'm not sure if you can see this but there's a green line on here there's also a white line too we tried two different pens and you can see that both of them are not lining up to their corresponding colors so I definitely think that it is slipping somewhere. So it's good to know. Um, and this is pretty much proof. This is kind of confirmation of that. Good luck for anybody trying to steal this dinghy. There's no propeller, no oar locks. <laughs> they're not gonna get very far if they try and steal it. I got a propeller. Um, the measurements aren't exactly correct, but it was the only one that they had in the shop. And at this stage, it seems to be the nearest and closest thing on the island that they have. If it fits, I have a feeling it's just not the right pitch, um, in which case it 
just won't be as efficient, I think, as what it's meant to be. I don't know, I mean, at this stage, I think this is kind of gonna be the best that we can do until we can go to a place that actually has them. It's about a half an hour walk to go to where the buses are, and you get the bus for about 20 minutes. So it's quite far to get to the shops from here. But this view is so pretty as you're walking back down the hill. Possibly it's because you know that you're kind of coming to the end, but look how beautiful this is. Okay, so it works, but it just squeaks. Squeaks. I can handle a squeak, but how bad is a squeak? Oh. Ow! Quit. The issue is that it's not the right fit. Oh, is it not? Oh, wow, you can see those marks. That definitely. Well, it'll get us by, I guess. Yeah. Good job. So at least we have movement, um, but it's noisy. Mm -hmm. Drive fast. <laughs> Try when you drive quickly. You don't need to tell me that. Having kind of fixed the outboard problem, we can now move on to what we were actually meant to be doing. Although it continued to rain, we were both eagerly eyeing up our new flexible solar panels just sitting in the rebirth. In order to install them, however, we needed some room. More specifically, a new bimini to put them on. Using the instructional videos from Sailrite, we planned to sew a soft fabric roof and attach the flexible solar panels to this. First though, we had to remove the old roof and rigid panels. Okay, the roof is off. And we've now got the roof on the front on the bow so that we can still bring some solar energy in while we are doing this. Ads is downstairs editing currently, so we need all the solar that we can get at the moment. All right, time to pattern this Bimini roof up. That's hard with uh, one person and a lot of wind. I had to recruit Adam into helping me uh, because it was just too windy and everything was flying off. With the pattern made, it was time to cut out the fabric. So I'm in the bedroom. It, uh, it started raining outside, but thankfully I just finished up the patterning like just before it was done. The only place on the whole boat that I can actually lay this pattern out with a reasonable amount of space is in the bedroom on the bed. To make sure I don't cut my sheets because they're pretty much the same colour. <laughs> it's 10.30, there's material everywhere and I finally finished cutting all the material out. So, sewing tomorrow.
getting there. It's a very, very calm day, so it's perfect to put this up. I've been sewing for a few days. There's only so much footage of me sewing that we can all handle. So what I have come to learn is that I cannot sew zips on corners. So I've had to Velcro the corners on. I think that this is one of those things where somebody's just gonna need to show me how to do it because I've tried on almost every single one of the sewing projects I've done and I just haven't been able to sew corners. So anyway, Velcro is my, now my friend. Um, and along those lines, what we decided to do, Adam and I, after much deliberation and much looking at other people's um, solar panels, how they popped their flexible solar panels on their Bimini roof, um, a lot of people have Velcroed theirs on. And so this is what we're gonna do as well. Adam is also making the coffees as well. So I need to do this by the time he makes the coffees. Oh, a bit late, the coffee's already here. <laughs> I'm too busy just chattering away. Morning. Okay, so it's on, it's looking okay. Uh, now you can see what I've done with the solar panels. So I've only done four at the moment because um, I, I've been unpicking a lot of things during this whole process and I think I just got a little bit too sewing happy without fitting first. So I've stopped at four out of the six that we're gonna put on here. And I'm just going to try and fit the solar panels on first to actually see whether my shapes, my markings, my sewing is, is all accurate here. After a bit of measuring, dismantling, unpicking and sewing, the project finally came to an end. Well, it has been a day full of sewing. Uh, it's been a day full of tantrums. It's been a day kind of full of rain, a little bit of half rain, but torrential when it did pour down. So work was a little slow, but all of the solar panels are on. For some reason, not only do I struggle with corners, it seems that I also struggle with just, just rectangular things too. But hey, it's done. Um, it's done to the best of my ability right now. We're still waiting on one more solar panel. So that's the one that as soon as we get that, I will sew them all on properly, but I need a break from the sewing machine. I'm happy with how they look. Um, I'm not happy with the amount of time it took me and energy and, and resources and ugh. Um, it probably took me, it took me over a week to do it. I think maybe one day we stopped. Um, I did need to wait around a little bit for rain as well, but even so, like seven days non-stop of just sewing um, and unpicking a lot of work, it does, it gets to you. <laughs> So, here it is. For now, I am going to shore. I'm gonna go get myself an ice cream. I just deserve an ice cream. <laughs> 